Hello there, it's so great to see you again. I'm Dr. Albert Chung, your friendly proctologist. I want to first express gratitude for all of you. Let me give you one statistic about this channel thus far, just to help you feel like you're not alone, okay? There has been one million views of my videos this past 28 days. If that doesn't tell you that there's a lot of people in the world researching, struggling, trying to survive with bottom end issues just like you and me, let that speak volumes. And will there be more? Yeah, probably because this community is growing and I have you to thank for it. So let's give ourselves an applause to get ourselves more aware of our issues so that we don't feel like we can't talk to people, that we can't bring it out in the open. Let's be healthy in all of our body parts, right? So today I want to talk to you about my <laughs> bottom end. And I know, I know so many of you would love a photo of what's going on on my bottom end. I know many of you are so curious because <laughs> I've seen comments like, hey, Dr. Chung, with that exercise that you talked about, can't you show us a picture or can you demonstrate it? And I can't do that here. Come on, guys. This is YouTube. I would, this is not OnlyFans.com. I'll get these videos and this channel completely banned if I were to do that. But I will be as descriptive as I can. Okay, let's the compromise here. So let me update you on what's been going on with my health. Okay, so let's get to the diagnoses of my bottom end. Okay, I've never formally shared this, but number one, I have anal fissures occasionally. Number two, I have hemorrhoids, internal and external. Number three, I have anal spasms, okay? And wow, that feels really crazy and weird <laughs> to tell you all of you this stuff about my my no-no zone. But hey, um, if, if, if anyone's gonna share, I might as well go first, right? So I'm gonna go through each one of these, tell you what I've been struggling with, how I've been helping myself, and um, yeah, give you the opportunity to ask questions. So let's talk about the diagnosis number one, which is anal fissures. I get a fissure about one half to one time a month. And honestly, that's not bad. You know, I'm not gonna complain about it, but do I get them pretty regularly? Yeah, unfortunately I do. And that's just being honest with you. I mean, I choose low res foods here and there. Like I like bananas for fruit, um, but I'm a huge fruit eater, which eater, which gets me in trouble like persimmons or like papayas. If I have too much, I know I'm gonna have an issue. Um, what's another one that gets me in trouble is energy drinks. And you're thinking like, Dr. Chung, you're a doctor shame on you shame 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 you know those things are so bad sugary caffeine you, people die from that i know but you know what uh, my favorite is red bull <laughs> and when do i drink it um mostly when i go mountain biking with my friends i mean you know you're trying to do a nice workout you got you know several hours in the day you're having lunch with your friends and then that's when i crack out a red bull to reboost my energy and i'm so stoked and i'm so high on life that oh man the red bull whatever the hell is in there the caffeine or the vitamins or whatever stuff it gives me an emotional high. I'm not kidding you, it is like cocaine and it makes me feel like I wanna get back out there, have the time of my life, start hooting and hollering. Oh, I mean, I do love mountain biking, that's enough sometimes, but after lunch, oh my God, I've got to have that Red Bull. So what happens is that Red Bull dehydrates me because it's got lots of caffeine in it. I will start peeing and if I don't replace my hydration, not drinking enough, guess what will happen? Next day, oh, I'm gonna pay for it. So do I know the warning signs are coming and do I ignore them? Yeah, and I don't have to explain that to you. That's, that's just a decision I made and life goes on, right? But man, my fissures, thankfully they don't last for weeks at a time. Usually about day four to seven, the pain starts to really simmer down because I'm getting back into the routine of things again. And thankfully they start to resolve. But do I have that scar tissue that's easy to pop open? Yeah, 
Absolutely. If I examine my own bottom end, I would see the scar tissue there and I would say, hey, I can tell you struggle with fissures, don't you, sir, Albert Chung? And I said, and I would say, yeah, absolutely. You got that right. <laughs> Let me take a break from this vlog and introduce you to the sponsor of this video and channel, which is Pranacura. I love these guys and I love this product. You've seen me and heard me mention this many times before that I actually use this thing. Yeah, for real. For my fissures and hemorrhoids, this is what I like to go to first now. I don't have a single tube of Preparation H in my home anymore, correct. The big thing I like is the menthol, okay? When you have a fissure cut, it does burn a bit more than it without the fissure, but with hemorrhoids, oh, that menthol is heaven because that coolness, it just lets my anus relax. And guess what? People with spasm have also been telling me that coolness is helping them to distract them from pain and make life a little bit easier. This cream in here, the, this is my second vial, by the way. Not, you know, some of you I've actually heard say, hey, Dr. Chun, doesn't really look like you're using very much. I probably use more than you. I said, this is my second vial, okay? What about you? What are you on? <laughs> so go ahead and check these out. Check these guys out. You can only get it on their website, okay? Only at www.pranicura.com. I invite you to go and check out their testimonials and give their product a shot. Thank you so much, Pranicura. Okay, so the next diagnosis is the one I probably talked the most about on my channel, which are my hemorrhoids. And I have internal and external ones. Do I have hemorrhoids that are bulging out? No, but do I feel them popping out or something? Some, I've described it as like a worm last time. There's something slippery that kind of moves in and out once in a while. And that actually gives me the signal that I need to get banding. So I would say I have grade two hemorrhoids by definition there's something moving in and out and um am i proud of that no i'm not proud of it but i think the years of surgical training by having to hold my poop in hold my farts in um hold you know be working for hours on end without being able to go to the bathroom um, having to get that poop out quick because i've got to get to i have to go back and do something as quick as possible um, that's always been my routine for even, you know, before surgical training. That's just the, always the way I was. You know, I didn't drink very much water. And while you're working, yeah, how, how the heck am I supposed to do that? I can't carry a huge water bottle with me. I'm carrying like papers and stuff. So my hemorrhoids have had a beating. And I've had four hemorrhoid bandings so far, okay? And uh, my wife, God bless her soul, she absolutely hates doing it because I'm so particular. I mean, what we do, I'm bent over on the table. She busts out her iPhone and records a video while she's doing the scope, and that's the examination. We then review the video together, and I tell her, this is exactly where you need to hit with the rubber band, okay? She's a vascular surgeon. She doesn't really know the bottom end like I do, so it gives her a lot of stress. I also stress her out a bit, you know, to be honest, but thank goodness, love her so much, you know, that <laughs> she does it so gracefully. But now, you know, whenever I feel that worm coming in or moving around, I know that the banding is do. And along with that, my, when I have my fissures, what's bleeding is the hemorrhoids, the hemorrhoids right alongside the cut. And I notice I get a little bit more quantity of blood when I get my fissures. And that's when I know, yeah, my fish, my hemorrhoids are starting to grow a little bit. They bleed a bit more. And that's just the natural progression of these things. It's not just about how much trauma they have over the years. It's also about us getting older. Um, the tissues become a little bit more stretched out. And then of course, more fragile hemorrhoids tend to get damaged easier as well too. So hence, the issues tend to progressively change over time. Diagnosis number three is the anal spasm. Now I've talked about anal spasm as a topic of education for all you guys, but I'll bet you didn't know that I struggled with them myself. 
Um, yeah, it's a serious thing because you know what? It sucks and it really hurts when I get them. But thankfully, I haven't had them for several years now. Um, but I would get them in the past. What usually strikes it up for me is stressful times in life. And I'll just be, um, you know, I'll finish peeing, for example. This is when they most commonly occur. I'll finish peeing and then I do this movement where I try to get the rest of the pee out of my urethra. I'm sorry if that was too graphic for all you are. Sorry. But that's what I'm doing is pushing on the muscles in my perineum area that connects the genital area to my anus. And for some reason, when I do that, it sparks a huge wave of contraction that goes straight to my bottom and and up my pelvic floor. It's like a lightning bolt strikes me like bullseye right in my hole. Or if you imagine like a live electric wire, you know, you've got the telephone pole, which has been struck down by wind and that thing is barking and going crazy and that thing just goes pitchfork right into my anus i'm not even kidding you it like will double me over right there and then it's so insane if you've had them before it's it's you can't describe it but um the what's interesting is that while i don't get those huge spasms i get little minor ones where I know I have trouble with urinating. That's what I've noticed recently in the past like six months or so. And I believe it's because of the multiple bandings that I've gotten. Uh, and will I stop getting bandings? Um, no, I have to keep getting them because that's, I, you know, I wanna keep them, you know, hedge trimmed, landscaping, if you wanna call it that, or maintaining them. Uh, but if I have to go pee, I get the urge like normal, but when I'm sitting there in front of the urinal, like, nothing's happening it's the craziest thing like it used to just whoosh right out but now i need to like hum silently or i need to do some deep breathing like really deep fill up my lungs and belly and let that pelvic floor drop and then i can go pee and you know what's nuts i was there was one time i was in the mall with my son he had to go pee i help him and then it's my turn right finally it's i get to go but this kid, this dark, he's five years old. Bradley comes over and he just sticks his head in front of the urinal like, Hey, Dad, what you doing there? Hey, uh, are you, you going to go pee yet? I mean, and I'm like, I want to tell that boy, like, get the hell out of here, boy. Like, don't, do you have it? I know this is stuff I got to teach him. We're like, come on, like, why do you got to watch me? But anyway, I mean, obviously it's because we're always watching him. He has no shame in it yet. But that makes me even more tightened up. It makes it even longer to go pee. But uh, once I get the stream going, it's not an issue. But that's something that I know my anus muscles and my perineal muscles, which are connected, are causing that delay in urination. So it's something I have to be, it's not, it's not something where I would call a health problem yet, but I would say, yeah, I've, you know, I have some of the sequela or consequences of having my bottom end intervene with banding procedures and hemorrhoids and fissures, just like all of you, right? The anus remembers, anus remembers trauma and this is the habits that it wants to adapt to. Well, thank you so much for hanging with me in this graphic vlog, but I promised to those people that wanted pictures or more visuals that I would, you know, help you use your imagination. But, you know, I want to share my story with you and tell you this is why I understand people. This is why I'm really interested and invested in this part of our body. And this is part of the reason why I became a physician and surgeon. Not specifically for my bottom end, but I guess that's just sometimes that's how the world works, huh? Well, thank you so much for being here. Let me introduce the sponsor once again, which is Pranacura. You can only get this on their website, www.pranacura.com. And I hope that you can use this to help you with your recovery. And of course, I hope the information in these videos are helping you get better with your recovery and your condition. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.